effects of the pandemic has shocked the interconnected economy, that global economy. And as scientists rush to develop a vaccine for this disease, countries have imposed lockdown restrictions. This means staying at home, avoiding social gatherings, and most people are now working from home. And Kenya is part of this. We have curfew, a dusk to dawn curfew, and other restrictions just to prevent and curb spread of the coronavirus. The country has never been faced with such a global plague and therefore has never had an opportunity to use technology in response to such diseases. Therefore, we ask, how is technology helping in curbing or in the fight against the coronavirus. We speak with the ICT Innovation and Youth Affairs Cabinet Secretary, Joe Mushero, to just highlight some of the innovative ways there are, the opportunities, the solutions, and most importantly, the challenges that come with now the trend of using technology in most of the things that's happening. Let's now join him for that discussion in like 30 minutes time or so. Thank you so much, sir, for joining us. It's a great honor to have you with us tonight. Karibu sana purity. All right, thank you Welcome so much. Welcome to Ministry of ICT. <laughs> Asante sana. So, coronavirus, the new normal, you know, you have to stay at home, working from home. Tell us how it's affected you as a person, how a new normal looks like for you. It's, uh, it's obviously a new thing completely, mm. uh, where you're seeing there's no international flights, uh, even going out of Nairobi is uh, restricted. So for us, uh, first in the ministry, Many others are still working from home, so we've got different uh, shifts. So really being in the office and it's, it's almost empty is, uh, is an interesting and a new experience that uh, we are having. At the same time, interacting with the rest of uh, government, you know, with the CSAs, we have cabinet meetings, we have other meetings with PSAs, and many of these are now happening digitally. So we meet even with the counties using uh, video conferencing equipment. Mm -hmm. It's, it's been interesting, we, you know, people are at their homes, do they have the right connectivity, is it working? So you have people with equipment, others yeah. using uh, their mobile phones. Mm. Uh, so it's been uh, very interesting yeah. and, uh, and in a different way of working. People not sure about security, uh, government. There's a lot of documents we yeah. tend to sign and give, even emails. Mm. You, it, sometimes you print and give. But now with the technology and because of COVID, we are able to actually move things a lot faster. So I'm saying there's some efficiencies mm. that we have seen. I think COVID has brought things that uh, maybe will be here to stay mm -hmm. across um, mm. you know, the globe. So, so many of these things, so you don't have to travel, you don't yeah. have to you know, take so much time and cost in doing some of these things. So we've learned those. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it has the effect on the economy. So we have a lot of people who are now uh, affected, their livelihoods are affected and so how we manage and work with all these people mm -hmm. to ensure they are catered for and uh, taken care of. Mm -hmm. Those are the changes. So we have new challenges that uh, we're taking into yeah. account. And I would also, as a member of the National Emergency Response Committee, yes. uh, really request you, your view on the response by the government. So far, it's the fourth month now since we've reported the first case, and there has mm -hmm. been a lot of pressure from Kenyans to reopen the hurting economy. W what are the bare minimums? So, so I would say, you know, the first thing is that this disease, no one knew anything about it. Um, if you looked at what was happening in China, or Italy, the U.S., you know, all these other places where they have uh, infrastructure, they have all the facilities ready, it, it was worrying. Because then uh, once uh, the cases came here, we didn't know what, uh, what to expect. So the president was quick to gazette the National Emergency Response Committee, chaired by the CS of Health, uh, Motahi Kagwe, and we embarked on ensuring that we provide the safety and the rules that are required. So stopping planes from uh, countries where there was uh, infections already reported, ensuring that everybody now you know, follows the very clear protocols that the ministry gave, uh, providing the information that people needed. So communication was happening throughout the country, on all stations, ensuring that on a daily basis we're informing people on what is happening and where is happening, getting all the equipment, the protective gear that is required, all those things. A lot has happened, a lot has been done. I would say we are very fortunate because of devolution. Uh, we actually had already devolved the health facilities and quite a few investments had already been made in many of the hospitals. That is being upgraded now, but we've been able to see that uh, as government we've responded 
uh, to the needs of the country. We've protected our people. We shut down the schools uh, in time, so the spread uh, was limited. We locked down, um, let's call it partial lockdown of some of the counties where we were seeing very high cases to limit even though some of the Kenyans were not following the rules. Mm. I think majority of Kenyans understood the crisis, and I believe as a country we've actually done very well. Yes. The frontline workers were very, and have continued to be very supportive, and this include the health workers, they include the police and security services who've been working on this. I mean, the contact tracing, you find a case, you need to go find all these people and bring them. There's been a lot of support from, mm. I would say, everybody. The yeah. religious institutions agreeing, you know, not to hold these uh, gatherings. Mm. Even the politicians uh, stopping all the political gatherings that were there. Th those, I mean, right now, even in terms of uh, funerals, you know, people are social distancing and you don't have the crowds that uh, used to be there. I think as a country, we've done well, the government has done well in the way we've uh, responded. Yeah. All right, and in the fight against coronavirus, there is the issue of avoiding social gatherings, of course, which is coming with its impact. People have to work from home. Others yes. have lost their jobs, definitely. So let's talk about IT, how IT, how the country is using technology to respond to coronavirus. And we are talking about even uh, responding to the patients themselves, the healthcare workers in the education sector. Mm -hmm. How is IT being used in the response right now? So, so there are two, two things. Let's first look at the health side. Yes, sure. The health side uh, posed some of our major risks, social gatherings and so on. So now using um, video conferencing, we've actually been able to ensure that people can still meet, but they don't have to physically meet. There's this social, this social distancing on that. We've also seen the doctors being able to work with doctors across the world, whether it is Wuhan, whether it's South Africa, Using video conferencing, they've actually been able to, to talk so that whatever people have learned, say, in Italy or they've learned in uh, Cambodia, our doctors are also getting the same learnings. And so that, again, uh, collaboration is, is happening. Um, contact tracing was one of our biggest uh, challenges. Mm -hmm. And to be able to do that, we required to have um, use of technology, whether it is uh, mobile phones. This is technology that we've had before that we can actually rely on, and that has helped or helped us really in being able to get um, the people, bring them uh, either to quarantine or to the health facilities where they are being treated. And so far, we have seen that these technologies have worked, at least on the health side. Mm -hmm. If we look at uh, the, on the side of uh, the economy, people have had challenges, for instance, with uh, they've lost jobs or you've got the old and vulnerable. We've had floods, we've had locusts, we've had many things uh, happening. So the president uh, launched, uh, not now, actually some time back, the Inua Jami um, program. This is where you provide cash transfers to the elderly and the people with disability. That has uh, been expanded, more money has been given. I believe it's over 40 billion shillings that is going to that uh, group of people. There is also the Kazim Tani. Now all these are using mobile technology, mobile money, to be able to send money out so that people can be able to receive whatever they are. So you're not closing the local economy by taking food there. You're giving them money and they're able to decide what is it that they want uh, to be able to buy. Two days ago, actually, there was a transfer for you know, the Inua Jami. And people across the country are very happy. And the same thing with um, Kazim Tani. This is the one of cleaning the, you know, drainage, the roads, ensuring that we have, you know, national hygiene. That also is going on well, and it is using the same uh, technology we are talking about. So in a lot of ways, technology now is part of everyday life. It's mm -hmm. part of what we are using. And really, I thank the operators and others who reduce the cost of using this technology. So for mobile money, I think they reduced, uh, there were no fees for I think up to a thousand shillings. And, and, and so many people have significantly benefited uh, from now the increased uh, use of technology. Yeah, and uh, let's talk about the effectiveness of the technology because there has been a lot of concerns, especially in the education sector, the online learning. Most yes. learners, especially in rural areas, cannot access these online classes. Yeah, what's the effectiveness? How would you say, um, 
even before the effectively, let's talk about the trend, right. the uptake of technology by Kenyans. Are you seeing uh, more Kenyans increasing demand for technology right now with the coronavirus, or how is the response? Are Kenyans still holding on to their traditional ways of o o operations? No, I think technology mm. is now at the heart of very many things. Mm. If we look at even the the artists, the musicians, even the DJs, they've also gone online. They are being able to give their I would say entertainment or services to citizens using uh, technology. Uh, we are happy with the Kekobo. Uh, this is the copyright board, Kenya Copyright Board. We're able to set up a system where now people can receive their money directly. So again, using technology, if you perform uh, in an event, you can actually be paid. And if uh, media and others use your music or they use your you know, entertainment, you will actually be paid through these uh, systems. So we've actually seen an, an, an increase, a significant increase. Mm -hmm. Yes, there are many schools um, in the private sector and some even government that have devices and have used those for their online learning. But you'll find uh, in the past when we were setting up for, for instance, the digital services, we were doing this in classrooms. We were doing this in schools. Unfortunately, our children now are at home. So it's important that then the families, the kids have devices and the budget is a significant budget to ensure that everybody has a, a device. So we've been looking at what are the options, how can we use the existing one million devices that we had already given um, to the schools to be able to maybe give only to the candidates so that they can use. But you see during this time also, you, you can't just go straight to exams, you also have, uh, have to learn. And so there's a lot of work that is going on in ensuring that we have the devices as well as connectivity. Uh, the president announced uh, and, uh, and signed off for us to have uh, the, the balloons from Google, uh, their company called Loon. Those have actually ca have come. Not all of them are here. They're still uh, arriving. We expect once uh, we have about 35 of them, then the whole country will be covered. At least they'll have 4G coverage. Yeah. So, so the things that we're trying to work on, but it's a very uh, big task, especially now with the reduced uh, budgets because of the slowdown of the economy because of COVID-19, that you don't have as much money. The money is going into protecting health, is going into giving people the cash transfers that they can use and, and so on, not just into education. So we're still working and uh, hopefully we'll have a yeah. solution soon. Right. And on the uh, embracing of technology in the country, there has been a lot of let's say misconceptions about this new technology, Google Loans. Maybe you can make clarification because the last time you said we are yet to implement this as a country, but you are assuring Kenyans of its safety. There are so many concerns that it's, it, it, it's connected, the interconnection of this uh, in, internet with, with the viruses that we are experiencing globally. Yeah, so so that's, <laughs> that's, a, that's a 5G conversation that people have been having. Yes. So, so first of all, the, the spectrum that is used, the radio waves that are used by these technologies exist they are natural it's not that this thing is creating something new and uh, loon and uh, all these other 4g and all these other services we've had already exist and people have had them and uh, they are not the ones that caused the uh, covid 19 according to some people who are trying to peddle that they are not the cause the balloons are the same as a base station which you normally see you know the towers uh, out in the street. So instead of having it out in the street, you have it up about 62 kilometers up in the mm -hmm. air and it services uh, a lot more people. But you're using your same phone, your same technology, it is safe. People are not, uh, mm -hmm. people are using it. If I look at uh, the statistics coming from the Communications Authority, mm -hmm. we've seen significant growth in the usage of these services. Mm -hmm. So I think Kenyans are safe uh, in using the communications technology, and they should be safe that uh, even 5G, which we don't have yet, yeah. is not a problem, mm -hmm. even globally. All right, on the challenges, you've mentioned that you, you're going to work and ensure that every person access technology, but there has been concerns, especially on the privacy, security, and now the, the, the increase of social ills. Uh, people are saying that young people accessing this technology, they are watching a lot of things, and being attributed to even teenage pregnancies, the reports have been going around an increase of these social ills, drug use. Mm -hmm. Maybe le let's, let's address some of these uh, challenges and how technology can be used efficiently during this time. 
So the first thing I'll say is that as government, ours is to create an environment that is enabling, that one that works, and also protects citizens. So we have uh, the access to information law already in place. We have the computer misuse and cybercrime law in place. We have the data uh, protection law also in place. So we've put most of the policies and the regulations that are required uh, in place. I'm hoping in the next week or so we should actually have a new data commissioner. This will be the first one. Uh, in our history, someone that is going to be now taking care of um, all our privacy and all our information. The laws are very clear and very strict. So anybody that is caught uh, either with the espionage or hacking or even fake uh, news and so on, the laws are very, very clear. And the judiciary is working with us to ensure that we protect Kenyans. The second thing is... Um, we also have a responsibility to continue to educate our citizens, parents, on how they use the technology. So we, I instructed uh, last week but one, the communications authority to work with all the internet service providers to ensure that they are providing to all their customers, especially parents, the, the methods that they can use to be able to restrict uh, some of this adult content that the children are sometimes being exposed to, to restrict harmful information that is uh, being peddled, whether it's on uh, crimes or, or things that are not uh, conducive you know, for our young people. So the communications authority is in the process of finalizing some of those regulations that we're going to actually put in place in conjunction with the uh, with the operators and the parents, you know, the users, so as we make sure we are providing a very safe environment. Mm -hmm. I'm happy to know that there are companies that have already begun innovating in this space. They have created uh, servers where you can go and you subscribe to a specific service. And even if you allow your children to now use that uh, Wi-Fi service or that link, mm -hmm. you know that the content that is provided is clean. clean. It is not uh, just open. So if you don't know how to clean uh, and, and to secure the device, you give them a connection now to this service where it is being done. So there is innovations that are coming in, but I agree it is a concern that we are working hard to ensure we, mm. we fix. Mm. And this includes people who are trying to use um, social engineering to, to, you know, to take money from people. You know, people are being conned all the time. All those things we are we're working towards uh, mm. e ensuring we eradicate. Yeah, and uh, there's also the issue of, let's address the issue of unemployment, especially among young people. Mm. Uh, probably how many right now have been rendered uh, jobless and uh, the opportunities now, the technological opportunities there are right now, so where the, uh, so young people can tap into. It, it's, it's a really big concern mm. uh, for the president and for the whole government that there are people who are being uh, made redundant in this process. And it's not just young people, it's, 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 yeah. it's all through. But it affects the young people even more. Because again, uh, especially those who have young families, they, they're just starting, it, it, it's quite tough. And this is why the Kazim Tani uh, program has uh, been brought. It started with about 26,000 people, now it's uh, being moved to about 200,000. At the same time for us, we've uh, been working with uh, different partners to now get our youth to online and, and digital jobs. Again, those uh, trainings are ongoing. We are seeing uh, a lot of uptake. We have trainers now from across the country, training people in, uh, I think it's almost 20 different areas that people can specialize in, whether it is uh, transcription, whether it's uh, virtual assistance. And all this training means once you get your connectivity, you have a device, then you can be able to subscribe to work uh, overseas. And we're seeing again, quite a few people are already working. And lastly, let me say we've been working also very well with the judiciary. And with the judiciary, we're in the process of now launching a transcription service, where in all the different courtrooms that have been digitized, the proceedings that are going on are recorded, and then we have our young people transcribing those proceedings and then uh, giving them back to the judges and magistrates so that then we're not only making the court process more efficient and fast, but we're also creating work. So all these are different areas uh, that we're working on and we'll continue to look at ways of being able to enhance. Mm -hmm. uh, we have worked with Media Council to ensure that we're giving even the media. I think we've supported now about uh, 134 media houses. We've supported about 300 um, journalists, and we're giving them between, um, 
I think it's five to 25,000. This is for the journalists. Media houses are getting from uh, 200 to 2 million to so all these different groups. And so far, I think we've uh, distributed about 124 million. Uh, and, you know, we continue to, to look at ways of just being able to support everybody. All right. Yeah. And finally, I would ask about the innovation challenge. We've seen countries like China, Italy using drones and also robots, especially to take care of uh, the patients of COVID-19, just to minimize the interaction and infection, further infections for people who are not infected. So right. what's the innovation challenge? We also saw our students at KU, you mm -hmm. know, trying to invent some ventilators because some of these things being used in, in, the, in, in, in curbing the spread of coronavirus are being imported and not really uh, uh, available, locally available. So the challenge, what is your challenge to innovators and scientists out there? So we have, uh, we, we, we actually we had a hackathon mm. uh, at Konza and this was open to everybody and we had about 250 innovators who actually came into that hackathon and now we have about 15 uh, companies that were selected in uh, the different categories that we are supporting. We're providing both the uh, money, but also the training, all the support that they need to be able to get their innovations uh, up and running. Mm -hmm. At the same time, I, I gazetted a COVID-19 advisory committee, which is chaired by the Communications Authority. And, and so far, they've received over 400 uh, different innovations. And in fact, uh, I, have, uh, I have some that I was, I was looking at, which uh, they were sharing and you know from the health side there's uh, this one they are calling it uh, the pill shop and what they're doing is that this is a uh, an innovation that is uh, supporting in terms of providing the if you want appointments if you want to talk because right now you don't necessarily want to just go to the hospital you want to let people know if you're sick so they're providing a platform that allows remote consultation we have my health africa who have provided a telemedicine platform for COVID-19, then there is um, AFIA um, record, and uh, this one they're using artificial intelligence and data, and they're trying to support. If you have an underlying condition, you go there, you get all the information that you need to be able to ensure that, um, you know, you, you take care, you take all the precautions that are required. We have another one, Zalisha uh, Digital Farming Platform, this one not only helps you in the farming process, what are the inputs, how much fertilizer have you put, but also even uh, the market opportunities that are there. There's an Acre Africa, which is um, a digital wallet uh, that has been uh, set up. You, you put your savings there and you can use that as uh, your transaction history. You can borrow, you can use that to buy uh, some of the inputs. And then there's others. I mean, there's uh, a community uh, platform that has been created in Bungoma. Um, so they're calling themselves Voices of Bungoma. So they're allowing anybody who has any content, whether it is video, whether it is poems, whatever it is, just to do with the COVID-19 come and uh, put that, and then it's available to the community. They can be able to share. We have a very, very innovative uh, society. Right. Our youth and our people are mm. very innovative, so. But so far, welcoming so more innovations. Yes, yes, <laughs> All right. we are, we are. That's the time we had for our show, but I'll welcome your parting shots as we wind up. I mean, mine is to tell Kenyans, you know, we are open to supporting the innovations that are going there. But right now, our biggest uh, problem is still the coronavirus risk. And really, we must take care. We must take care not only of ourselves, but of our brothers, our sisters, our parents, just to ensure that we go through this process safe, we come out stronger, we come out better, and really let us support one another. Let us take care of our neighbor, because no one else will. And you know, we are one community, and uh, this is the time for us to do that. So. Thank you very much, at least, for giving me the opportunity to share these views. Thank you so much for your time. We highly appreciate it. Awesome. And that's all the time we had for this conversation with ICT Innovation and Youth Affairs Cabinet Secretary, just talking about technology and COVID-19. A lot is being done, but there are opportunities to tap in right there. The issue of privacy, the ministry just assuring Kenyans that they are working into ensuring that every, every person, especially on the young people, as they access this internet, especially on the internet and technology use them, they are their privacy is secured and also it's also safe for children to use thank you once again for your time i'm purity musedu enjoy the rest of our viewing bye bye